bit of lunch before a dive, made some nice little quesadillas, chicken and cheese and a bit of capsicum and pretty basic stuff, but caramelized, yum, cooked well, it's always good. We're gonna go out to this dive site that apparently is spectacular, big cave, and uh, apparently there's some little sharks in there, um, sulfur bubbling away, Sh should be really cool, I'm gonna try and take some footage in there, see how we go. That's our afternoon, then we're off back down to town because it's going to blow up tomorrow. A lot of wind coming and uh, we need to get some shelter. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Sailing Nico. Well, we are pretty close to journeying home. We are in the Harpies, a beautiful island group in Tonga. You're going to love it here. We're going to take you for an amazing dive. But on this episode, we're talking about our plan back home. Uh, where we're gonna go, how we're gonna get there, how are we gonna tackle this crazy passage to New Zealand. Hope you enjoy the episode. So who's diving? Me. Yeah. And you. And you guys are spearing fish? David. How's it look down there? Looking good. Very big drop off. Cool. Let's go diving. Ready? Woo! Three. I'm a little scared of this cave. <laughs> you can burn yourself at the back of it with the hot springs if you're not careful. found the cave because their bubbles are gone so either they've found the cave or ran out of air so let's really hope they have they appear to have made it back safely finally everyone's home we're back <laughs> it was amazing amazing coral huge fish lots of healthy coral and pretty cool cave Cave could fit about three or four catamarans in there, maybe five <laughs> or six actually. And uh, sorry we couldn't take you there, it was about 20 meters, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe would, more. Would have killed the GoPro. And who wants to go retrieve this anchor? Not me, Not I've me. been sitting up here for at least oh, 15 minutes. <laughs> This island. As we checked out, we had a chat with our customs guy, and he was telling us how he's he's trying to get work in Australia or New Zealand. And we said, why? Why would you want to leave this beautiful paradise? And he said, well, here I earn 150 Tongan a week. That's about 100 New Zealand dollars a week. 
and uh, we've been shopping and it's hard for us to even buy food for our family here. It's like 70 US. Yeah, it's it's very expensive, the food here, so I don't know how they afford housing, um, schooling, all the things that we take for granted, and he's got a government job, he's a customs officer. So it's interesting, Tonga. Tonga is actually a kingdom, it's still ruled by the royal family, all the um, land is leasehold, still own, all of that still actually belongs to the royal family, even the Tongans land is part of, uh, they can't own it freehold. And Tonga, interestingly, was the only Pacific nation that wasn't colonised by a Western power. And while that's great because it means they've maintained their, their independence, it has its flip side because all the other nations we've been to, you can see the benefits of colonialism in that the Western countries have really helped them. There's great infrastructure, there's great systems, there's a lot of support, there's a lot of aid, there's a lot more wealth basically and you can see the people of Tonga do really struggle more than some of their neighbours because of that. So as Josh said we're actually island hopping our way down from Hapai to Tonga Tapu which is the main island of Tonga. That's about 80 miles, we're going to break it up because there's lots of little cute islands in the way over three days. When we get to Tonga Tapu we're going to check out of Tonga, we're going to get some fuel and some food and we're going to head off to a place called Minerva Reef, which is just basically a reef in the middle of nowhere that you can anchor. 250 miles from Tonga, it's going to take us a couple of days. Then at Minerva, we're going to wait for our weather window to New Zealand. It's another thousand miles from Minerva Reef to Opua in the Bay of Islands. And it's a really tricky passage, that one, to New Zealand. There's consistent lows that roll through about every week. Uh, at this time of year can be really quite difficult, quite windy, quite stormy. We are liaising with a guy called Met Bob, Bob McDavitt. He does forecasts for people and he's going to give us some waypoints, tell us when's a good time to go. You usually want to pick um, your low to hit you in the middle of that passage because it's, it's less powerful there and you want to come into New Zealand on the back of a low when it's coming into a high, coming into some better weather. That's ideal. You don't always get your ideal weather but we will try and wait for that and we also are going to try going to this waypoint called John's Corner. A guy called John works for Predict Wind. He reckons if you go to this waypoint which is kind of uh, not in a direct line uh, to New Zealand, it's kind of out a bit, a bit of a dog leg to get better winds, to get better angles coming into Opua. So we're going to take all that into consideration over the next week or so and hopefully make it safely to New Zealand in about two weeks time. Back in the day a lot of people used to make a direct line to New Zealand and essentially what happens is you go over the Kermadec Trench. This is thousands and thousands of, of meters deep, this trench, and all of the currents hit it and the water just lifts on end and, and it's, it's caused a lot of boats to get seriously damaged or even sink and so that's why we do this dog's leg around to New Zealand. The weather's really closed in on us, we're getting about 20 knots uh, flying along at about 8.5 knots and uh, we've got a big reef in our Genoa. There are heaps of whales around. What's really funny is the whales go with the weather like we do. Uh, people ask us, do you see whales? Of course we see whales, we see heaps of them. And uh, at about this time of year, in a week, or maybe even tomorrow, all of the whales will just leave, just like that. And guess who else leaves the Pacific at the same time? Us sailors, we all go. There's about 500 of us, we've all been sailing together and we're just gonna go for it. And isn't that cool? Like, feel so in tune with nature being here on a boat. I wanna show you this whale, it's breaching, it's coming right up out of the water. We made it to Inca and uh, it's a nice little bay going in and we're going to cook up some ribs on the beach. We're going to build a smoker. Yeah. But a bit of lunch first, eh? Bit of lunch first. Can't eat it. It's got gluten in it. Ah, uh, gluten free belt. Dad's trying to poison me. What's that, baby? I'm trying to remind it. Are you putting some beer in the fridge? Um, oh, I 
I don't like Heineken. Corona, I guess. They're all the way down there. Hmm. Still got quite a bit of alcohol to drink because it's all got to be gone before we get to New Zealand. You can only bring in how many bottles can we bring into New Zealand? Um, three bottles of spirits, but more of wine to add up. So I've marinated the ribs, doing a bit of cheating, giving them a bit of pre cooked browning them off because essentially they're just going to get smoked for the next couple of hours. So they look really good like this even now, but if you tried to eat them like that, they'd be chewy and nasty. So we're going to smoke them for a couple of hours. Mm, it's going to be pull apart. Beautiful barbecue. So is this simple. actually our dinner or is this just a snack? This is a snack. Just a snack. Yeah, snacks and beers. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a quite a boring day. That's what we do when we get bored. Hey, we um, make delicious snacks. Delicious hey, Bella, snacks. Hold this up, sweetie. Smoked snacks. Bella, hold this up. Mm. I just actually need to get this. Just hold, on. hold this up. Or just get the tin for them. Wrap. Just wrap. Wrap, wrap. Oh, no, I can't wrap it. You're gonna smoke it? Be, yeah. Smoke. Just. What are you thinking? Yeah. Just, we need this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants to explain this? Okay, Malachi, can you explain our theory, the theory of the smoker here? What have we got going on? This is our smoker, and yeah. see, there's rocks on top of it. Mm -hmm. We're trying to cover up the hole so not much smoke comes out, and we put a piece of tin foil over that, covering up that bit because heaps of smoke is coming out. And where's the we, smoke supposed to go? Where do we want it to go? We want the smoke to travel through this pipe up into there so we can cook some smoke right somewhere. We got any smoke coming yeah. through there? But no smoke's coming out that pipe yet. No. Mm. What will we do, Josh? Hey, we need more wood in there, dudes. Okay. But more wood. I'm still not sure if it's going to work. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Mate. Corrugated iron. Looks like it's got a lot of smoke coming out now, though. We've got smoke, that's for sure. Have a look. We can get more, though. We can get more. There's a bit of smoke coming. Oh, yeah, I can see it. We haven't even closed this up yet. Ooh. So when we close this little corner up, we'll be in the business. Good. Let's check this out. Yes. And you think it's going to work? Yeah, totally. <laughs> All going wrong, at least I pre-cooked them. Pre-cooked them. <laughs> this is the rib reveal. Mm. Yeah, it's like the block. Ooh. Hey guys. Yep, it's all good. Grab a rib, guys. Really? Uh, one each. It's smoky, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we we're going for. Yeah. You like the marmalade? Yeah. Good. Awesome. Uh oh. That's unfortunate. We just managed to get in the dinghy and get that big piece of rock off our anchor. Thank goodness. It's a bit crazy. And we are now leaving Haver and heading to Namuka. Our next stop on the way to Tongatapu. Namuka is really interesting because it was the last stop of the bounty before their mutiny, the famous mutiny on the bounty. And there's also an ex-prison on the island and supposedly some fruit trees where we can get some, some fruit. So that could be fun. Here we are, we made it. Pretty short sail, upwind though. It was fierce, yeah, but a lot of fun. The marlin came after my rod at one stage. And we're at Namuku Iti, and uh, it's a beautiful beach. This is where the bounty was, and uh, you know, mutiny on the bounty. This is the last anchorage before the mutiny, and uh, we're going to do a bonfire. And uh, I've got a, a pork pork uh, shoulder. No, not a pork shoulder. Pork belly, slow cook. It's going to be our last barbecue, probably. So we get back to New Zealand summer, so we're making the most of it. Beautiful beach. What are the boys doing in here? Causing havoc with machetes and axes. 
getting firewood. Yeah. <laughs> Too cute. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, she, she was just like, it's your hand. <laughs> <laughs> All that with one beer in there. Yeah. After this, we go to Tonga Tapu, and this is the last nice beach we will have. Um, and then there's Minerva. And then there's Minerva. And there's nice beaches in New Zealand, but what's going to be the problem in New Zealand? It will be flipping cold. <laughs> yes. Or raining. Uh, what is this, Josh? Oh, what is oh. We've got a pork belly and we've got a duck breast here. Wow. So how do you do the pork belly? Like, what's the technique on the open fire? You gotta like sear the outside, crisp it. So like, get, get it all nice and brown, and then you slow cook it for a long time. You slow cook time. it with fat on top. Uh, you mean what side? Yeah. Uh, I just turn. Yeah. You just want to slow cook it. And how long does it take? Uh, three hours. Four hours. How long? How long? Feel it in the soul. Kids are going crazy. Put the wood in the fire. Adults having oh, fun. Yeah, I think so. Pretty much gone. Oh, look, it's Litch Clean. Litch Clean <laughs> was good. It was really good. Really good. Yes. 5 a.m. start this morning on our way to Tonga Tapu. We've got the lines out and we've got a fish on both lines. Hopefully, we can bring in both fish. Tapu, we've made it. You guys, uh, what have you done? Ah, uh, making cards for Gideon. Uh, whenever there's a birthday, we can get off school and make a card. So we basically just spend all day making really strange cards. Yeah. Sweet. Gideon's is... a friend from uh, Lysian, another boat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Mine is a killing card, which means I just do Give a bunch a look of at the killing dead going on. people on the, on the front. Nice. And on the back, I cut some weird things off a magazine, just strange things. Christina yep. Rapley, cool. yeah, Christina Rapley, and <laughs> birds, you guys. dogs. Hey, um, what are yeah. you doing, Bella? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going a bit behind schedule at the moment. By the way, rape some is not things. something to joke about, children. Oh, but her name is Just Christina so Rapley. Just so I don't get some more, right? Uh, she's right there, she got Christina cool. Rapley. Okay, dudes. What's this place like here? It's very rainy, but it's quite nice, though, for a big town. Why is it so rainy now? Well, in the last week, the weather has turned. It has become rainy season. It's not the tropics. No. Nope. That we know of. The whales are leaving and so are we. Because the hurricanes are coming. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of jobs. I fixed the toilet because uh, some people on our boat don't flush their toilet properly. And what happens is the urine gets stuck in there and calcifies up the pipes. And you need to clean those suckers down. The water maker had a bit of corrosion on it. You know, normally, nine times out of ten, when something doesn't work on a boat, it's corrosion or lack of maintenance. Uh, and uh, just tightening up different 
little bolts tightening up the cars on the rigging, checking everything. Maybe Got this big passage coming up. Yeah. Everything's going to be A1. Getting the shopping bags ready. We're going to go to town. We're going to I check out um, with customs. We're going to find some food. Thank you. We're going to yeah. look for some diesel. Uh, I think we can get duty free diesel after we check out. And yeah, just get ship shape, get ready. We ready got about, to go. We've got about four or five days with the tuna. We did, but, we caught three tunas yesterday, it's so good. But we need about two weeks with food in case we get stuck at Minerva Reef yep. for a long time. Need a provision for two weeks, even though it's actually only going to be two days to Minerva, and then six days to New Zealand, which is eight days, plus another couple of days in Minerva, so that's ten days. But, yes, what if we get stuck? We need to have food. <laughs>